Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. Law firms will take this as a retainer. What? <laughs> it must be a law firm where they hungry as hell. Now you gonna help me with this parole I'm dealing with? Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. With one taste of our premium blends of all natural ingredients, herbs, and spices, mm, you'll fall in love with meat all over again. Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce collection is made up of two zesty flavors, original and spicy. There's only one way to bring order back to barbecuing. Just add Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce and seasoning and you be the judge. You are familiar with Jason Whitlock. Let me bring him up. You were on his show. I, I know who you're talking about, yeah. Right. So Jason Whitlock has been going back and forth with Stephen A. Smith. And he does this from time to time where he talks about people. He, he was talking about Deion Sanders a lot, right? To where every Friday during the football, the college football season, he designated that show on Fridays just to talk about Deion Sanders. And so now he started talking about Stephen A. Smith of ESPN. And he was basically saying how Stephen A. Smith um, was not a good athlete in college, you know, and that he played, he didn't write his book. Um, Very few do. They usually have a ghostwriter. Right. Basically criticizing Stephen A. Smith. And so Stephen A. Smith, this is, he's a commentator on ESPN. He's been one for over 20 years, not on ESPN, but just a comment journalist and stuff like that. And he does work for ESPN. Um, he does a good job. He's very popular. So he responded to um, Jason Whitlock and called him a fat sloppy bastard and a piece of ass or whatever. And he was letting him know, I did write my book because I talked about my mother, my sister, my family, blah, blah, blah. I have an honorary doctorate degree from Winston-Salem because he's he contributes money and he raised millions for scholarships, whatever, whatever. So they're having a pissing match back and forth. You know all where all this comes from, don't you? What? From professional wrestling started about 60 years ago. They started this and it's just spread through the sports community, politics and other stuff. It's even getting into Formula One now. First step in. Uh, and yeah, I don't want to go too far into it. Let me just. I'm think. not going to, but I'm just saying it's a methodology that spread from the entertainment world, not the real world. And, you know, in New York, uh, professional wrestling is not under the auspices of the sports and athletic commission. So Jason Whitlock criticizing Stephen A and his resume. And he did two shows and then now Stephen A is responding. Right. And my thing is, and he responded, he was saying, nobody wanted to work with you. You were let go. People don't like you. You a piece of ass. You a fat bastard. All this stuff. Saying you're lying on me. But this is the same Stephen A. Smith that came for Kwame Brown when Kwame Brown was just minding his business. He started criticizing. Yeah, I know. It's all professional. Let me finish. Right? Let me finish. He started criticizing Kwame Brown just out the blue, saying that, he wasn't a good basketball player. He didn't live up to the hype because he was, I think, drafting on the first or the second round. And then Kwame was like, I'm minding my business, dude. Why are you talking about me? And Kwame responded. And then Stephen A., I guess he didn't want to look bad. He did a whole segment on ESPN highlighting all of the mistakes, I guess, Kwame Brown made during his basketball career. It was so tedious. So now that Jason Whitlock is basically doing the same thing to him, why are you now 
taking a stance of you are a piece of S and you don't need to be talking about me. You need to mind your business because no one wants to work with you, whatever. It's like professional wrestling. Not a kettle black. Professional wrestling. You don't recognize it? So you're saying it's fake? Yes. It's all hype. You see the wrestlers. I, I Look, I did this thing, I, I confess, 25 years ago, 24 years ago, I did this thing with children. I'd show up and do the character thing and the professional wrestlers would entertain the children. These big six foot seven, six foot five inch Superman type. And you see them on camera and they're going at each other's throats and they're sitting up here cooperating, dealing with these children, sharing a pitcher of beer when they're not with the kids talking about how they can impress the children to stay in school and stay drug free and focused on life. So that was the WWE. Um, it's interesting, but it's theatrical. By the way, some of the people involved have also read the 48 Rules of Power. And one of the things in there that they take off as a sham is talking about somebody badly that is not going to offend your supporters, but might energize them into supporting you because they are on your side. So it's a tactic, a technique. I don't know whether they're really at each other. And neither one of them is a clown like Lamont Hill. <laughs> the other thing I'd say is... I, I know, I think, I think they're all neck and neck. Well, yeah, but these people have done stuff Lamar Hill has never done in life. Now, like I'll what? say, well, they did, I'll did, say did, this. Journalist. You're getting, yeah, but Lamar Hill isn't much of a journalist either. And he wasn't an athlete, not an actor. He can't sing a dance that I know of. And they wanted to talk about Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown got drafted out of high school. He didn't go to college. Yeah, that's right. He had drafted out of high school. Yeah, and the other thing is, is he had some children that he sacrificed his professional career for so he could be a father. Didn't do a bad job either. And he is the first to tell somebody stay in school. So he just said, hey, I was a young kid. The bottom line was, is this wasn't really the real world, you know, and it's like, okay, fine, but there's other stuff I need to be doing to catch up. Mm -hmm. So I don't hold it against him. You know, he and I have done a thing or two. Yeah. Right, you've been on, right he's, been, he's, he's been on here. I interviewed him. You hooked that up. You've been on his um, channel. Yeah. Oh, he's not a bad young man. He's got mm -hmm. a lot going for himself, and he's staunch for the caller. So I don't have problems with him, but a lot of this stuff is hype, and where it came from is professional wrestling. And they started this years and years and years and years ago. Hell, I was in elementary school, and we used to say, what are they doing? And they talk about each other and that sort of spread. It's like you had the National Enquirer, the Globe, the Star, the tabloids that copied the English tabloids. And now the LA Times, the Commercial Appeal, uh, New York Times, Washington Post, particularly, even though they maintain a little bit more credibility, they look an awful lot like the National Enquirer, the Globe, or the Star look like on the front page where they editorialize and call it news reporting instead of news reporting and having an editorial section. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like comic book stuff. It's like you can't go to CBS now. CBS that had Walter Cronkite, most trusted man in America at one point. Now they've degenerated into a clown show where you can count that they're going to bad mouth the usual suspects, not because of what they say is accurate, but because the suspect has to be countered so that what they say does not interfere with their efforts to capitalize upon and monopolize the consensus. So it, it, it's kind of crazy. So this is nothing but show. Don't even about it. For, for, for views, for views. And if I want to do the show on YouTube with that on the thumbnail, 
I would have got a lot of viewership. It's just that sometimes I, when it, especially when it comes, even with women, right. But with men, it's like a pissing match. And, well, it's not, and, and you know what? I'll say this, no insult to women, but what you're looking at is what 35 years ago, 40 years ago, you'd see nothing but women do. They, they, still, they still men. do that now. They still do that now. I know they do, but I'm just saying now you got men. This is part of the effeminization of the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's the not tea, many the tea You don't and talk the about him in politics. Okay. You want to get on him about whether he says black or African American? Back the hell off. What the hell have you 90 done? seconds. Sorry. Lamont Hill. You're a bullshit artist. So what have you done? Right. <laughs> you can't stand him. Yeah. You really cannot stand him, Lamont. No, I hate this kind of punk play where they talk a bad game and what have they done? What'd you do in college, boy? Did you sit there and start pushing the agendas in college or did you just try to fit in? Mm -hmm. At least these guys have been out playing gladiator. 